All right, so today we start chapter five. We're talking about perpendicular and angle bisectors. The objectives you need to have written down on your notes will be, I will learn to apply theorems about perpendicular bisectors, and I will learn to apply theorems about angle bisectors. Vocabulary also that needs to be written down is equidistant and locus. Starting with the first vocabulary word, um, equidistant, that means a point that is the same distance from two or more objects. First theorems you need to have written down, perpendicular bisector theorem, which states that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Remember that the if part of the conditional statement is your, your givens. So if a point, that's the point x right here, is on the perpendicular bisector. So you know it's perpendicular because of that 90 degree angle, and these tick marks say that that is the bisector. So if you have this, x segment xy is perpendicular to segment AB, and you also know that segment YA is congruent to segment YB, then your conclusion would be that the distance from x to A is equal to the distance from, equal to the distance from x to B. Okay, so x is equidistant from A and B. Right, on the opposite side of that, the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment. So in other words, if you know that the distance from X to A equals the distance from X to B, then your conclusion would say that this right here, X, Y, and B, that makes a 90 degree angle. And you also know that the distance from Y to A is equal to the distance from Y to B. Okay, that's the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. Next vocabulary word is locus. That's a set of points that satisfies a given condition. Okay, so we can define perpendicular bisector as the locus of points or the collection of points in a plane that are equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Okay, so here's our first example. We'll need to write these down. Um, looking at this, you notice that NP is perpendicular to LM and you also know that the distance from P to M is equal to the distance from P to L. So that means NP is the perpendicular bisector so the distance from M to N is equal to the distance from L to N. And since LN is 2.6 that means MN is 2.6. Next example, right. looking at the picture, we need to find the distance from B to C. So looking at the diagram, distance from AB is 38, the distance from AC is 38, and I know that AB, or excuse me, AD is perpendicular to BC. That means then that BC is twice as big as CD. So if CD is 12, 2 times 12 gives me 24. So BC, the length of BC is 24 units. All right, next example, I want to work you to work this one out on your own. So I'll give you a chance to draw this out. I want you to pause the video and see if you can find the distance from T to U. Okay. All right, so hopefully you pause the video and trust you on that one. Uh, let's see, the distance that I got was 28.5 units. If you got that, great. If not, here are the steps so that you can check yourself and see maybe what you did wrong so you can fix it. All right. Um, next thing for the next theorems, remember that the shortest distance between a point and a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from that point to the line. Okay, so this leads us to our next two theorems. First one's an angle bisector theorem. If a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So looking at the hypothesis, you notice that angle APC is congruent to angle BPC. Okay, so if you had a picture like this and you notice that these two angles right here are, are congruent, then that means that ray PC right here, that's an angle bisector. Okay. So if I pick any point on this ray, like point C right here, the distance from C to A is going to equal the distance from C to B. Okay, 
it's got to be important that that is perpendicular though. So you need to know that that's 90 degrees on both A and B. Okay, the converse of that says then that if a point is on the interior of an angle and you know that that point is equidistant, which means it's the same distance from C to A that it is from C to B. So if you know those two distances are the same, then that tells you that APC is going to be congruent to angle BPC. All right. All right. Based on these theorems, an angle bisector can be defined as a locus of all points in the interior of the angle that are equidistant from the sides of the angle. Notice our two vocabulary words are being used to define angle bisector. All right, now we're going to look at some examples. So we'll look at this picture right here. We got angle ABD or BAD, and it looks like ray AC is bisecting that angle. So to find the measure of BC, we look at our angle bisector theorem that says BC then would have to be equal to DC. So if DC is 7.2, BC has to be 7.2. All right, we're going to look at the next example. Find the measure of angle EFH. So EFH would be right here. Given that the measure of EFG is 50 degrees. All right, looking at this, they have us mark that EH is congruent to HG. So the definition of an angle bisector would be that EFH is half of this outside angle EFG. And since we know EFG is 50, half of 50 would give me 25 degrees. All right. Next example, measure of MKL. So I'm going to leave this up to you again to try it, practice, see if you can answer this question. So pause the video and then come back and check your answer. All right, so here is the answer. You should have got that the measure of angle MKL is 38 degrees. Again, like last time, if you got it, great. If you didn't, here are the steps to hopefully help explain why we got 38 degrees. Next example, given that y, ray YW bisects angle XYZ and WZ is 3.05, what's the value of, or excuse me, find the distance from W to X. So we look at this, the bisector theorem says that WX would have to equal WZ if we know that ray YW is an angle bisector. So if WZ is 3.05, then that means WX is 3.05. All right, here's our next example. I went ahead and jumped ahead for a minute to give you a comp of, of an equation. We're going to have an example where we have to write an equation in point slope form for the perpendicular bisector of the segment with endpoints C at 6, negative 5, and D at 10, 1. All right, so the first step we need to do is graph the line segment CD. Okay, and remember that the perpendicular bisector of CD is perpendicular to CD at its midpoint. So first we graph. Next step is that we'll need to find the midpoint of CD. So using the midpoint formula, we will substitute in the values for C and D, which gives us that the midpoint is at 8, negative 2. So there's a graph. We graph the midpoint. The next part is that we need to find the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So the slope formula would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So again, we're going to plug in our coordinates for c and d, and we get a slope of 3 halves. Now, since the slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals, we talked about this before, so we have to change the sign and flip the fraction. So we got three halves, positive three halves, so we want the perpendicular slope, we have to flip it and change the sign. So that's why we got negative two-thirds. Okay, so use the point-slope formula to write an equation 
perpendicular bisector of CD has a slope of negative two-thirds and passes through eight negative two. So using our formula, y equals, or excuse me, y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. All right, we substitute in our, va our variables, or excuse me, our numbers. We get that. And then we graph. All right, so the last example I want you to try. Here are the two points. And I want you to pause the video, follow the steps, and check back with me for your answer. All right, so here is what I got. I got a slope of negative 2 thirds and then the midpoint of 3, negative 1. So when we plugged it into our equation, we got y plus 1 equals negative 2 thirds x minus 3. Okay, and then I graphed it for you so you could see what it would look like. Hopefully that is what you got. This concludes our notes for perpendicular and angle bisectors.